I don't know. How do you do it? How do you react to the shit? I just, most of the time, I'm able to just move forward. Mm. Like I try not to get stuck in it. And I think that that's like when I talk to people who really get caught up in it, it's like the difference between me and them in those moments is that I don't keep thinking about it. Like I just go, okay, that's just the way it is right now. And I can step back and not get completely invested. I'm not like that all the time, but with certain things that feel very out of my control, I am, I am. You let them go quickly. Yeah. I let them go. Why do I linger on them? Like a cranberry song <laughs> that I don't know, Michael, why do you? I don't know. I think cause my mind's going a million miles an hour. I'm doing all these things. And, um, it's not that I expect everything to be smooth sailing and, and happen and, and be fine and be great. And I know there are things along the way, there are bumps along the road, on the road, whatever. But I, I, I think I do get a little overwhelmed at things, it, it, you know, especially when, when that hits, when it's one thing after another, I try to do the breathing. I try. And then all of a sudden I'm drinking a Coke. I'm, uh, you know, I'm not exercising as much. And I kind of go down. I'm like, what, am, what are you doing? And if you just kind of realize maybe that, hey, stop, go back to the routine, go back to, mm -hmm. do you have a routine? Yeah. I was going to say though, I think a part of what I do too, though, is I don't overload myself. I don't like having a ton of stuff on my plate. And so I try and keep it so that I don't. Like, I don't like it when I have it. Like, I do get stressed out when I have a lot. So I kind of control my life a little bit so that I don't have those moments that you're talking about where it all piles on top of each other because then I feel like I'm scrambling and I can't keep up. So, like, part of how I manage it is I just don't have as many things that I'm doing. Like, I feel like you do a lot of things. Okay, I'm, I think you were caught in your first lie because you're going back to school. You're on a show. You, uh, you know, I, I mean, you do a lot of things, but maybe you are able to not spread yourself too thin and go, I could handle this. I could handle this. And when yeah, something yeah. you can't, right? Yeah, I, have a, I guess maybe it's more like I have a sense of what I can handle. And I, and I don't push myself too far beyond what I think I can handle. That's good. Do you get annoyed easily? I mean, I know you do because you got annoyed with me sometimes on the set. <laughs> but <laughs> sometimes, especially if I'm tired. Do you when know? Hungry. Yeah. Or when you're hungry. That, yes. I, I get like that. We get We get hangry. But like you're dating someone. Do you uh, do you find yourself like, why? Why did I just get annoyed? Oh, I'm sorry. That was such a small thing you did. But for some yes. reason, it pissed me off. Absolutely. Especially during COVID. That's definitely it's more annoying. Like, why are you eating the cake? while it's in the fridge. Why not remove it from the fridge and then eat the cake? Yeah. This isn't necessary. <laughs> <laughs> oh there's a printer going off in my office it's fine yeah uh, so yes the yeah. answer is yes I, well if i were him i'd say because i'm a guy this is what we do not an excuse. i have an arnold palmer it's a jug of arnold palmer iced tea of course i live alone it's different but i open the fridge and i give a little chuggy chug because no one else is going to go in there and probably drink my iced tea unless they ask me. And then I'll say, hey, I just chugged on that. You might want to be. Right. But are you spilling your iced tea into the fridge? Okay. Now we're getting somewhere. So you're saying he's a little <laughs> bit messy. He spills cake in the fridge. It's really irrelevant in the grand scheme of life. But in the moment, at times, it can be annoying. Yeah, I think what's funnier is the conversation maybe you have an hour later where you're like, um, sweetheart. I don't know if you call him sweetheart. Maybe honey bunny. But perhaps you just say the cake incident. I mean, you're, you're a pig, but I shouldn't have reacted like that. And um, I'm sorry about the uh, cake fight. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't ever get to fight, fight land, but definitely it is, a, it is strange. So you don't fight? I think we, we don't have, like, fight fights. Um, we'll, like, disagree or have an argument about something, but we don't, like, I don't, like, we don't have yelling fights. I can't imagine you yelling. I would love if just on this podcast, one time you just laid into me. Yeah, I won't do that. That's highly unlikely. You never yell? When's the last time you yelled? At work, because it was in a scene. Oh, it was the writing. I like the, uh, you, so, so, so you were in a moment and you had to yell because it's written in your acting yelling. Yeah, I've yelled in previous, in previous relationships, you know, it's come <laughs> to yelling. Um, but only if someone else yells first. 
Right. I mean, you you had a good upbringing. Were your parents yellers? No, they were they were quietly punishing. Quietly punishing. That sounds like a song. When you say that, you do something and in in a very subtle way, not to say they could shame you, but they'll say something that's just Oh, they know how to get under my skin without doing anything, much of anything. Yeah, but there were lots of rules in my household. You had to follow the rules. What were the rules? Please, you can't go out, you can't date people, you can't wear makeup, <laughs> you, can't, you can't do anything. You can't watch certain shows if there's kissing in them. Well, didn't you kiss Tom on Smallville? Oh, that's different. That's when I'm older. When you're an adult, it's fine. There's so- rules when you're like, growing up in a household but you still live with your parents for uh until you were what 19 yeah but my parents are very interesting they they have a they're very clear like when a kid turns 18 they are an adult and when they're an adult everything stops they're they don't try and parent they don't get too involved they don't demand my time or my energy they're like you do your life We'll support you in the ways you want to be supported and we'll back off if you want us to back off. And I feel no pressure from that. Wait a minute. So it's like, when's your birthday again? December 30th. Right, December 30th. I wanted to say earlier December, but I'm glad you said it first because then I didn't look wrong. So on December 29th, they might have been kind of rude and said, you're, you're going to do this, you're going to do that. And then the second you turn uh, 18, I'll let her leave her alone. Pretty much. That was their theory. And and I'm really, as I said, see some of my friends and their relationships with their parents like I'm really glad that they did that like I just don't feel the weight of them at all 